Good evening. Welcome to SAMS News Bite. I'm Damien Obey, and making the headlines in this week's news, St. Helena remembers, Amalia joins St. Helena's commercial deep sea fishing fleet, Rock Club Guy Fawkes celebrations, and highlights from this week's football. A remembrance service was held at the Cenotaph on Sunday the 8th of November, as AMS's Hannah Danford was in attendance. St. Helena joined the world remembering the serving and the ex-serving men and women at the Remembrance Service held on Sunday the 8th of November. His Excellency the Governor and Mrs. Capes arrived at 10.55am when the Right Reverend Lord Bishop, Dr. Richard Fenwick, invited those who attended to pray. The service continued with the National Anthem. The national anthem was then followed by the last post and the laying of the reefs. Reefs were then laid by the governor. Representative from the French Republic, Mrs. Susan Obey. The Army, Mr. Geoffrey Dawson. The Royal Navy, Mr. Jack Horner. The Royal Air Force, Mr. Marco Yon. The Merchant Navy, Mr. Chedrick Jonas. The St. Helena Police Service, Constable Christopher Joshua and the St. Helena Fire and Sea Rescue Service, Mr. Matthew Benjamin. The newest addition to St. Helena's commercial deep sea fishing fleet arrived at St. Helena last Thursday. After departing South Africa on the 28th of October, MFV Amalia docked in James Bay on Thursday morning at 9.40am, having taken eight days to sail across the Atlantic. Despite experiencing a few mechanical mishaps, the crew and vessel have arrived here safe and sound and were in good spirits. The vessel rounded Sugarloaf Point just after 8am and steamed steadily towards the moorings in James Bay, escorted by boats from the local fleet. Friends and family were on board Enchanted Isle and Helena Dorothy, and new sports fishing vessel, Egality, also formed a part of the escort. Family and friends boarded the vessel after it had been cleared by customs and port authorities. The crew and other parties then attended a reception at the Yacht Club. Um, Peter, nine days travelling back from um South Africa with your new boat, um, FV Amalia. Um, how does it feel to be back on St. Helena? Uh, I feel good to be home after the six days and nice, bad, bad, really bad sea conditions. But I've been there for like nine days, like eight days. Eight days? Eight days, yeah. No worries. And um, so, Peter, um, new boat, um, Amalia, deep sea fishing. Um, you know, what do you hope to achieve from having this new boat? 
Uh, well, I mean, helping go out there and get some fish and keep the fishing industry alive. Yeah. It was failing big time, but now we got offshore boats, so hopefully we can get that alive. All right. And um, the patches of the boat leg, um, you, like you said, you took eight days. Um, average speed traveling to St. Helena? Uh, eight to ten knots, between eight to ten knots, yeah. Okay. And um, I think I spoke to uh, Errol Thomas before, you um, engineer on board leg. Yeah. Um, seven tons of fuel, is that correct? We use seven tons of fuel, about 700 liters a day, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. with the main engine and the generator. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And um, now you're back on St. Helena, and like you said, you want to go um, deep sea fishing. Um, how much um, fish, could, if you, you know, in one trip, could you bring back to St. Helena um, after a visit to the seamounts? Well, the boat can carry between 24 to 30 tons of fish, yeah. but we don't know what we catch out there. Yeah, okay, no worries. And um, you're going to be forming a part now, but um, you've got swordfish going out as well, the John Malice and everything else. Um, yeah. How do you see that back with St. Helena in the future? Uh, really good. we got four boats. If anybody can problems, we can have somebody to help bring it back in again. Yeah. It's good. I'd like to see more than four boats anyway. I'd like yeah. to see more, yeah. All right. Uh, Peter, thank you very much, and good luck with your future official. Thanks very much. Skipper for the journey was experienced seaman David Wavy Immelman. Errol Thomas was the ship's mechanical engineer, and Raymond Benjamin took on the bulk of cooking duties. Ian Stain, Adrian Leo, and Benjamin brothers Gavin, Peter, and Alan made up the rest of the crew. The crew will now enjoy a few days at home before heading to the Seamounts, adding to St. Helena's rapidly growing commercial deep sea fishing fleet. As a part of the Guy Fawkes celebrations, the Godfathers Rock Club held their annual bonfire event on Thursday the 5th of November. The crowds had started to gather in anticipation at the club hours before the fire was lit. Hundreds of people attended the family event and watched as the fire was set alight at around 8 p.m. This year there was only one Guy Fawkes who sat atop of the bonfire. As normal, the bonfire was cooled enough for safety reasons, however, spectators could still feel the heat from the massive flames. As you can see, there was a small fireworks display that finished the evening off to the delight of the gathered crowd. Here now though is Liam Yan with news of the start of knockout football on France's Plain. Cheers Damien. Recently the 2015 league came to a close. Following on from this, last weekend saw the finale of the Ninerside Junior League held every Sunday at France's Plain. As with the Junior Futsal League, the Ninerside competition is run by the New Horizons with help of volunteers. One of the volunteers is Colin Owen, dad of David and Matthew Owen, two avid young footballers taking part in this year's junior football. Richard Wallace went over to the plane to watch the last game of the Ninerside League and spoke to Colin about the competition after the match. There's a group of us that run the Ninerside Football League uh, for Sunday mornings. Um, it involves a number of people. It's, it's really sponsored for New Horizons and Mickey Stevens, myself and various other adults help out on, on a Sunday and last Sunday was the, um, the deciding match in, in the Niner Side League um, and that was between the Sharpshooters which is mainly the Harford Kids and Galacticos which is the, the Pilling Kids. The, those teams have been competing really hard all year in the Niner Side League and in the, in the Futsal League and it, it certainly was the crunch match. It, it was a very closely contending match um, and sharpshooters um, uh, came out on top with a, a 2-1 um, win on the day, um, which basically decided the, the league. So the, the sharpshooters have picked up the league, but it was it had been an extremely close season, and uh, both teams have been neck and neck. Some really good players on either side, uh, and some outstanding football. Um, you know, it's, it's been great fun. It's hard work getting up on Sunday mornings to go down, but I must admit that the quality and the standard of the football and the enthusiasm of the kids uh, has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, and this is a year-on-year -year thing that we do, but certainly this year it, it's never been so competitive, um, certainly at the nine-side level. It's a, there's a number of there's a, there's a core few who actually make this happen. Uh, perhaps you could let us tell us a little bit more about uh, yourself. I know Nicky Stevens plays a big part, and how and how and how uh, it, all, it all comes together. And, and maybe in the in, in the years to come, you might get a little bit more support from the community. Yeah, I, I think we do get a great amount of support. Certainly, uh, Nicky's key to it. You know, um, Tina comes down as well and helps out and, and does a lot of work with with the kids there. Gibby Young is just a star. He he comes down and referees and, and gives support to the kids 
um, every Sunday. Um, I, t I tend to deal with the, the more the junior league, but the, there's the, uh, the, the the other kids league that goes on as well from all the, the secondary school, and there's various people helping and supporting there too. So no, it's it's a really good um, community spirit and community. Um, sport, uh, we, everybody helping out. We could always do with more people to come down. I know, I know it's difficult Sundays, um, but they, they, they certainly, the, the children down there do appreciate um, people coming along and cheering them on. Future Wirebirds? We'll just have to wait and see. Meanwhile, this weekend saw the start of the 2015 SHFA Knockouts Cup competition. Only two games were played as part of the preliminary round. The first of these was the ever-exciting St. Paul's Derby between Hearts and Fujis that ended 3-2 to the Blues. That was this week's feature game. Fujis got off to a flying start in this St. Paul's Derby against Hearts, with this goal from Carl Shoesmith coming within the first minute of play. Liam Yan then almost increased the lead but mistimed his headed effort. Hearts then stepped up their game and got balls to the front pairing of Shane Stroud and Jason George, who is unfortunate here not to get a clean shot on goal. They began to enjoy more possession, though they could not break down a Fuji side that were defending their early lead. Hearts drew level after this pass luckily found its way to Mikey Williams, who might have been in an offside position. Nevertheless, the captain struck a fairly weak effort which crept inside the far post. Here, what should have been an easy clearance was made difficult after Fuji's keeper showed inexperience, opting to try and buddy check rather than deal with the ball. Luckily, the resulting cross from Owen did not threaten the back line. Hearts continued to pressure for the lead, with a well-struck free kick from Owen and this acrobatic bicycle kick from Jason George. George was to be rewarded for his efforts after he received a pass, ran clear of the defence and stroked home for Hearts' lead. Fuji's nearly equalised immediately after going down, when good play between the front men saw Carl Schusmuth lay off to Selwyn Stroud, whose well-struck half-volley beat the keeper but not the crossbar. As they did in the first, Fuji's got a goal within a minute of the start of the second half, when this speculative effort from Tyra Alec slipped uncharacteristically through the legs of Andrew Young in goal. Hearts then went on the hunt for their third of the game, with even fullback Dian Maggot trying a shot at goal. They finally got the winning goal after passing play down the right saw this Chris Owen shot again beat keeper Leo at his far post. Hearts then pressed on, looking to put the game to bed and cement their place in the quarterfinals, but despite their efforts, could not come up with a goal. George was unlucky with this chipped effort that had to keep it beat. Despite having a poor game in goal, Leo kept the scoreline at 3-2 with this double save. The final whistle blew with Hearts moving on to the quarterfinal stage. In the other knockout fixture on Sunday, Wirebirds eased their way into the quarterfinal with a dominating 6-0 win over Wolves. The Birds' main man and man of the match, Rick Joshua, vied himself a brace with other goals coming from Sanjay Klingham, Joseph A. Salangwani, Simon Sipiu and Corey Sipiu. Wirebirds are now scheduled to go head-to-head -to -head with Hearts in the quarterfinal stage. That's all the sports news for this week, so until next time, back to you Damien. Thanks Liam. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of SEMS Newsbite. I'm Damien Obey, thank you all for watching.